I've got a pretty nice video for you guys today. So our goal is to find a certain value of the Riemann zeta function, and we'll find a closed form. So in particular, we're going to calculate zeta evaluated at four, which let's just recall that's the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n to the fourth. And in order to do this, we're going to first recall a fact that we've seen in previous videos. And then after that, we're gonna calculate the Fourier series for a certain function and then put it all together. So the fact that we need to recall that's like very famous and we've done it in some previous videos is the so-called Basel problem, which is the Riemann zeta function evaluated at two or the sum of the reciprocals of the squares is equal to pi squared over six. Okay, so now that we've recalled that fact, our next goal will be to determine the Fourier series for x to the fourth on the interval minus pi to pi. So what that really means is that we're extending x to the fourth on that interval to be a periodic function where the period is two pi. So let's first recall that we should be able to write x to the fourth with the following expansion. It should look like a naught over two plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of a sub n times the cosine of n times x plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of b sub n times the sine of n times x. Where these numbers a naught, a n, and b n must be determined. And they're like standard formulas for those, which we'll go over. But I'd like to point here that I don't have equality. I have this little twiddle symbol. And what this means is that this is not an expansion which is equal to our function. It's equal to kind of our version of this function that has been made periodic with respect to the integral interval minus pi to pi. So let's just keep that in mind. Okay, so our first goal will be to determine this number a naught. So let's put a little box around that. And we will recall that a naught is equal to one over pi. In general, it's one over half the length of our interval here. And then we have the integral from minus pi to pi of the function. Here the function is x to the fourth, so we've got x to the fourth dx. So let's notice that this is an even function, so that means that we can change these bounds of integration to start at zero and end at pi if we multiply by two. So that actually makes the calculation a little bit nicer. Now we can take the antiderivative, leaving us with two x to the fifth over five times pi, evaluated from zero to pi. Now, if we evaluate that at pi, we'll get two pi to the fifth over pi, that cancels down to pi to the fourth over five. So we have two pi to the fourth over the number five. Okay, so now that we're at it, let's just maybe plug that in for our a naught. Okay, so that looks good. We have our Fourier expansion of x to the fourth is pi to the fourth over five, plus a cosine sum plus a sine sum. So now let's determine the coefficients of this cosine sum. So in other words, we're gonna determine these numbers right here. So let's recall, in order to do that, we have to calculate a certain integral. And what is that integral? Well, it'll be one over pi again. That's again, one over half the length of that interval. And then we'll take the integral from minus pi to pi of our function times cosine n of x. So this will be x to the fourth times cos n x dx. So that's the standard method for calculating this um, coefficient here. Okay, so next up we wanna notice is that cosine is an even function and x to the fourth is also an even function. So that means we can do the same trick. So let's, instead of going from negative pi to pi, we'll go from zero to pi and we'll multiply this whole thing by two. Okay, good. Next up, we see that we have a polynomial times a trigonometric function, and that gives us motivation to do integration by parts. 
And in fact, probably the best integration by parts to use is black pen, red pen's DI trick. In other words, we can make a chart with two columns. So in one of those columns, we'll put x to the fourth, and the other column, we'll put cosine nx. Then we'll take derivatives down the polynomial co column while we take antiderivatives down the cosine column until we get a zero for the derivative of the polynomial. Next, we can match things on the diagonal. That indicates multiplication and then alternate signs, leaving us with a quick way of calculating this antiderivative. And so what we will end up getting is two over pi and then our antiderivative will be x to the fourth over n times the sine of nx plus 4x cubed over n squared times the cosine of nx and then minus 12x squared over n cubed times the sine of nx and then minus 24x over n to the fourth times cosine nx. And then finally, plus 24 over n to the fifth times the sine of nx. And let's recall we have to evaluate that from x equals zero to x equals pi. So notice if we plug zero or pi into any of the signs, we get a collapse down to zero. That's because integer values of pi evaluated into sine give us zero. So this gives us zero, this term right here gives us zero, and then this term right here also simplifies down to zero. Furthermore, if we plug x equals zero into what's left over, since we've got a coefficient of x for each of these, that will cancel out. Meaning all that's left is to plug pi in. So if we plug pi into cosine of nx, we'll get cosine of n times pi. And then this is another copy of cosine of n times pi. But let's recall that cosine of n times pi is either one or negative one, depending on the parity of n. In fact, this simplifies down to negative one to the nth power. So now putting that all together, we can make a simplification of all of this down to minus one to the n times the quantity eight n squared pi squared minus 48 over n to the fourth. So that's our value of a sub n, in other words, the coefficients in this cosine sum. Okay, so let's get those coefficients up here. Okay, so there we've got it. Now the only thing that's left to do is to calculate these bn coefficients. So in other words, the coefficients in the sine portion of the sum. So let's do that over here. So again, we'll use this standard formula. So we know bn should be equal to one over pi and then the integral from minus pi to pi of our function, which is x to the fourth times sine of nx dx. Okay, now we're gonna use another trick with the parity of the functions. We know x to the fourth is an even function. The sine function is an odd function. An even function times an odd function is an odd function. But then we're integrating over a symmetric domain, negative pi to pi. That tells us that this integral is immediately equal to zero, which means all of these bn coefficients are equal to zero. And we really only get this constant term and the cosine sum. Okay, so let's get that. Okay, so there we have it. So we have our Fourier series for x to the fourth was equal to this object over here. We just did that big calculation. And that gives us a function that looks like x to the fourth that has been periodized to have period negative pi to pi. So in other words, period two pi. But if we restrict our domain to negative pi to pi, we don't just have the Fourier expansion, we actually have equality here. So that's nice, especially because that allows us to grasp at the sum of the reciprocal of our fourth powers by evaluating this at a certain value of x. Notice we've got an n to the fourth down here. And that's exactly our goal over here.
So what should we set x equal to? Well, we'll set it equal to pi. So let's do that. So let's set, like I said, x equal to pi. So it's pretty clear what happens here. We get pi to the fourth. Now let's look at what happens over here. So plugging the pi in here, we get cosine of n pi, but we discussed this before and cosine of n pi was exactly equal to minus one to the n. But check it out, we've got another copy of minus one to the n right here that will cancel with this minus one to the n. In fact, we get minus one to the two n, which is clearly equal to one. So that gives us the following formula. We have pi to the fourth from this substitution here equals pi to the fourth over five from this term, and then plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of, well, I'm actually gonna split this into two sums. I have eight n squared pi squared over n to the fourth. So I can maybe pull out the eight pi squared and then leave myself with n squared over n to the fourth or one over n squared. And then next I'll have minus 48 and then the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n, one over n to the fourth. Okay, so just to reiterate, this first term is giving us this sum, whereas this second term is giving us this sum. Okay, now we can apply our Riemann zeta function evaluated at two, in other words, the Basel problem, to rewrite this first sum as, well, we've got this eight pi squared out front, and then we have pi squared over six. Okay, and then notice what's left over is the sum in question. So this guy right here is minus 48 and then zeta of four, which like I said, is exactly what we want. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of calculation. That tells us that zeta to the fourth is equal to one over 48 times the quantity pi over pi to the fourth over five plus eight over six times pi to the fourth, but let's see, eight over six is four over three, so we have four pi to the fourth over three, and then minus this pi to the fourth. And then from there, it's just a matter of doing a simple arithmetic problem to end up with the solution pi to the fourth over 90, which is the well-known value for zeta of four, or in other words, the sum of the reciprocal of the fourth powers. And that's a good